Good day and good day and welcome to yet another funky daily devotional. Today's verse of the day is Colossians 2, 6, 7. Um, so then, just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in your faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. And that is Colossians 2, 6, 7. So today's verse of the, or not verse of the day, message of the day is titled, Let your light shine, let your little light shine. Be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. 1 Timothy 4.12 One thing the world needs to see is good examples. They need to see believers who walk in purity and love and faith in their homes and in their schools and in their businesses. The Apostle Paul exhorts us in Romans 12.17 to live above reproach in the sight of all men. Other scriptures teach us to avoid the appearance of evil. So when you go after God, don't walk out on the edge trying to see how much you can get by with. Go all out in God's directions. Conduct yourself in God's direction. Conduct yourself in a way that will put to rest any question about whether or not you're a Christian. Let the people around you see your love and faith and purity in every situation. Your example will go a lot further than your words. When our son, John, was a little boy, we were spending time with my grandparents. John was sleeping with my granddaddy, and he woke him up in the night and said, Pop, I have an earache. Would you pray for it? Well, my grandparents were raised in church. That didn't believe in healing. I don't know what Pop did, but... It didn't work. So John just got up and said, I'm going to get in bed with my mother. When she prays, it stops hurting. About 18 years later, Pop told me the story. You see, I had set an example of faith and love, and John remembered it. When your child or your children are growing up, they might forget some of the sermons you preached or act like they're not interested in the things of God, but they'll never forget your example. Even in the place where you work or go to school or just in your neighborhood, people might reject or argue with the words you say, but they'll never ref refute or forget your acts of love. Don't let petty sins and spiritual compromises cast a shadow over your example. Live above reproach and the light of Jesus shine brightly through you. Scripture reading is Romans 12, 9 to 21. Love in action. Verse 9. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patience, and affliction. Faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Verse 17. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of anyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, and my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, It is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The footnotes here is Romans 12, 16, or willing to do menial work. Uh, Romans 12, 19 is in reference to Deuteronomy 32, 35. Romans 12, 20 is in reference to Proverbs 25, 21 to 22. So we're going to read the commentation here. And we are in Romans, so it should be pretty easy to find. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. And uh, then we go 12. All right. And then we are 9 to 21. There we go. Most of us have learned how to be courteous to others, how to speak kindly, avoid hurting their feelings, and appear to take an interest in them. We may even be skilled in pretending to show compassion when we hear of others' needs or to become indignant when we learn of injustice. But God calls us to real and genuine love that goes far beyond being hypocritical and polite. Genuine love requires concentration and effort. It means 
helping others be, uh, become better people, it demands our time, money, and personal involvement. No individual has the capacity to express love to a whole community, but the body of Christ in your, in your town does. Look for people who need your love, and look for ways you and your fellow believers can love your community in Christ, for Christ. We can honor others in one of two ways. One involves ulterior motives. We honor our bosses so they will reward us, our employees so they will work harder, the wealthy so they will contribute to our cause, the powerful so they will use their power for us and not against us. God's way involves love. As Christians, we honor people because they have been created in God's image. Amen to that. No matter what they wear, no matter what they look like, people are created in God's image, and so we love them. Because they are brothers and sisters in Christ, and because they have a unique contribution to Christ Church. Does God, uh, God's way of honoring others sound too difficult for your competitive nature? Why not try to outdo one another in showing honor? Put others first. Christian hospitality differs from social entertaining. Entertaining focuses on the host. The home must be spotless, the food must be well prepared and abundant, the host must appear relaxed and good natured. Hospitality, by contrast, focuses on the guest's needs, such as a place to stay, nourishing food, a listening ear, or just acceptance. Hospitality can happen in a messy home. It can happen around a dinner table where the main dish is canned soup. It can even happen while the host and the guest are doing chores together. Don't hesitate to offer hospitality um, just because you are too tired, too busy, or not wealthy enough to entertain. Many people use their contacts and relationships for selfish ambition. They select those people who will help them climb the social ladder. Christ demonstrated and taught that we should treat all people with respect. Those of different race, the handicapped, the poor, young and old, male and female, we must or, or intersex, we must never consider others as beneath us. Paul says we need to live in harmony with others and not be too proud to enjoy the company, company of ordinary people. Are you able to humble tasks to do humble tasks with others? Do you welcome conversation with unattractive, non prestigious people? Or are you willing to befriend newcomers and entry level people? Or, or do you relate only to those who will help you get ahead? These are good questions because life isn't just about us, right? It's about others. God, God looks down on us as a community. He says, how can you guys just work together? Can you guys support one another? Can you guys come together as one and then come together as one with me? That's what he's asking for. These verses summarize the core of Christian living. If we love someone the way Christ loves us, will we be willing to forgive? If we have experienced God's grace, we will want to pass it on to others. And remember, grace is undeserved favor. Have you ever received, received something that's undeserved? That's grace. Well, that's a blessing. Undeserved blessing. <laughs> not... not uh, Punishment, undeserved punishment. That's not grace. Um, by giving an enemy a drink, we are not excusing his misdeeds. We're recognizing him, forgiving him, and loving him in spite of sins, just as Christ did for us. We love those who, who don't necessarily do good things to us. We love our enemies. In this day of lawsuits and in incessant demands for legal rights, Paul commands, uh, Paul's command sounds almost impossible. When someone hurts you deeply, instead of giving him what he deserves, Paul said to befriend him. Why does Paul tell us to forgive our enemies? One, forgiveness may break a cycle of retaliation and lead to mutual reconciliation. Two, it may make the enemy feel ashamed or change his or her ways. Three, by contrast, Repaying evil for evil hurts you just as much as it hurts your enemy. Even if your enemy never repents, forgiving him or her will free you from a heavy load of bitterness. How many times have you seen in the movie, you know, you have the villain and then you have the superhero and the superhero debates, well, I don't want to do what the villain did because then I will become part of the villainery. I'll be just like the enemy that I'm, that I'm trying to stop. Well, the way you stop that enemy is by doing good, not evil, right? You do good. 
Forgiveness involves both attitudes and actions. If you find it difficult to feel forgiving towards someone who has hurt you, try responding in, in with kind actions. So good. If appropriate, tell this person that you would like to heal your relationship. Lend a helping hand. Send him or her a gift. Smile at him and her. Many times you will discover that right actions lead to right feelings. So my, my friends came to me and talked to me about a situation, right? Someone did something awful, okay? And, and how should, what should I do? Should I confront this person? And um, my, my response to that is, is hey, if, I'm, if my words have any two cents, then, then give it, you know, give it three days. See if that person comes to realization on their own, right? Because you, you have no idea what's going on inside of a person. Guess what? I think it was like two days later that person came back said, I have all this stuff going on in my life. You wouldn't believe it. All the stuff that's been going on, you know. And, and people become very self-protective and selfish um, because, because of needing self-healing uh, during tough circumstances. This is the world that we live in. People shut down sometimes. And they act inappropriately in those situations to you or to others because they need love. Love is what? Patient. So three days is patient. Love is kind, right? Love does not boast in itself. Right? It's supposed to boast in the one above. Um, so let us be kind to other people who are struggling and suffering with addictions, with uh, whether it's pornography, whether it's um, kinks and fetishes, whatever that is, to be able to confront a person and, and talk to a person, but also be understanding and loving to know that they're going through a heck of a lot and uh, that really they're the one that they can change and that God above can change them too. And so we get to, we get to love people that don't look like us, that don't dress like us, that don't um, conform to the standard uh, in which we are in. And we don't have to live in a world of prejudice, pushing people away but we can love them as Christ loved the church, as Christ loves you or I, um, and is so patiently pursuing in love. Um, we can do that with one another. Heavenly Father, I pray that, that we would learn by your actions and your kindness and your zeal for the goodness of, of your children, of your family, God, that you are, you are coping, bringing together and gathering up, God, people around the nations. And um, thank you for your love for us. It's undeserved. It's unmerited. It's grace. Uh, it's abundant grace, like the message we learned today. And uh, um, I mean, just even just to read, love must be sincere. You know, hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Part, part of us having a relationship with you, God, is loving what you love and hating what you hate. And, and, and God, I even know that's, that's hard and that's difficult for me. Because, um, and here's the other thing, God, I... No matter who I am or how I think, I never want to rewrite the Bible. Even if I even if I disagree with something, God, you are God of all creation. You get to decide. I, I even I don't get to to decide. But I'm not going to rewrite the Scripture because of that. And God, part of my um, part of my struggle with hating what you hate is is Romans eight, which is homosexuality. And if if I was God, it wouldn't be such a big deal to me, God. But you are God, and it's a big deal to you. And I have, I have friends that, that live in this world, that live in this realm, and, and it's not an easy realm. I have friends who are, who are Christian, who battle with it day after day after day, God, and it's exhausting. It's an exhausting battle for them, and they hurt, God. And it's good that we have empathy for those around us, and everybody has a different story. Everybody has a different struggle, Lord. And my heart goes out to them. It says, love the people, don't love the sin, but I love the people, God. And again, if I was God, it wouldn't be such a big deal to me. But you are God, and it's such a big deal to you. And this is something that I wrestle with, is loving what you love and hating what you hate. And I love the people that you created. They're, they're created in God's image. So I'm going to continue to love them in spite of that. And I am not judge, you are. And so I, I'm blessed. I'm in a blessed position that I get to walk in them and not be their judge. I get to be their friend. I get to love them, God. I get to love all the people around me of all walks of life. No matter where they're at, I get to love the murderer. I don't get to love that fact that he's a murderer. And I'm not equating homosexuality to murder. They're totally different things. God, 
But life is full of struggles, and life is full of ups and downs. Love, uh, life and, and love is even full of uh, unique uh, moments of beauty and, and ugliness to God. And so, hmm, be the shalom, be the peace, be the persistence, God, pursuing us ever so gently into eternity, Lord. Make a way where there is no way, and do what, what only you can do and what we cannot. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. Have a wonderful day. Love everybody around you. In spite, in spite of everything, um, think about how God loves you and love people in that way. That's really what God's desire is for, for us, to love others as he has loved us. All right, have a good day. Be blessed. Have a wonderful week. God is with you, and he's for you and not against you. Bye for now.